Hey guys, it's Derica with Derica's Designs, and today we're going to make this amazing witch attachment. This has a full bodice and the legs, and this matching 12 inch witch hat. This is a sewn attachment, so you will need your sewing machines. Let's get started. Guys, we're back, and look at this big old girl here. She is a big old girl. Um, and then of course her, her big, huge 12 inch hat. All right. So let's just, let's talk about her really quickly. Um, because this bodice area needs to be pulled up into the center of the wreath, right? Or at least up towards the center in order to get this hat. Um, I opted not to do arms on her. Um, I felt like you don't want her holding anything anyway. You don't want her blocking any of this. So we did not do arms. But those of you, if you were here last year, you know we had a witch with arms. If it's important for you to have arms, refer back to that um, pattern. But we are also going to do another witch this season that will have arms. So um, just um, if you feel like arms are important on her, absolutely go right ahead. I did not feel the, it need, it was necessary, okay? So let's talk about a little bit about where I got things. This um, faux leather fabric um, is a Hobby Lobby Christmas fabric I get just about every year. It's just a really thin, um, you know, fake leather looking. You guys, you can use felt, you can use, if you can find a good solid black cotton, you can use cotton. You absolutely do not have to use the leather. Um, don't go out of your way trying to find specific fabrics on this. Um, this will be a great seller. You just want to get it into your shop ASAP, right? <laughs> so don't, if, if your Hobby Lobby hasn't gotten Christmas fabric in and you, you can't find this faux leather, don't go beating down the doors of every fabric store you know of. It's really not that big of a deal, okay? And you can absolutely use felt. Um, you can absolutely use, um, just like I said, a very solid black cotton, not a thin um, broadcloth type of, of black because it kind of has a grayish undertone and I don't think that would do this piece justice. But if you just could just find a nice solid black it would work because you don't really see much of it. Maybe in the boots, you see a little bit more of it, but up in the bodice, you do not. Okay. On this particular one, now I've, I'm, you've hopefully have seen all the pictures of the different ones that I did. I used several different fabrics, several different colors. Some I liked, some I did not like. Um, and some like this one, I think she's pretty good. Now, one bit of advice on this that I've just learned myself, um, go with two colors, two colors and a trim. Don't try to do the multicolor. It's too much for all of this. Um, and if you guys saw the picture of the one I did with the multicolors, it's just way too hard. For one, I couldn't find anything right now to match any of those colors because Halloween is you know, pretty much non-existent in the stores at this time of year. And two, I just didn't have, I felt like this purple, black, and silver. Simple. Do two colors, two, do a black with a contrasting color or a printed pattern here if you want. And then a trim. You can choose silver, gold, whatever, whatever trim you want, okay? Um, this one is, it seems very muted. But this is the look I was going for. I liked this. I have, I did one that was just black and gray. That's it, and silver. Black, gray, silver, nothing else. Didn't have any purple or anything in it. And I love that one. The muted tones to me are just, they just look really cool. I look at this hat. I took the same trim that I used here. And this was a trim I got at Joann's, guys. You're just gonna have to go to Hobby Lobby, Joanne, stores like that and find trims that coordinate whatever accent piece. Pick your colors and then go find stuff. Yes, you can buy them on Amazon, but you don't need 20 yards of anything, right? This was that Walmart pick from last year. I'm hoping they have something similar this year. They're not in the stores yet. This fact, all of these flowers and leaves were all from Walmart picks that I had gotten 
and saved from last year. I took the tool from her skirt and carried it over into the hat. I just wanted to give it a lacy, um, I don't know, more rich of a feel than just the faux leather under there. I used these little purple accents around here just to, just to glue that tool down. That's literally all that's there for is gluing that tool down. And there's pieces of tool. Um, you can shred it. You can make it um, look a little dingy. The, the only thing I don't like about these, I think I complained about this last year, this part of this pick where these little black balls are, that under there is brown. The plastic that's holding those little balls on, I can't stand it. But I like the balls on there, so I left it. So you just, this entire color scheme was chosen from these picks that I had right here. So if you have a pick, whether it be a candy corn pick, some type of Halloween eyeball ball, you know, pick type thing, whatever you're doing, choose your colors off of that pick and you can make your hat with all those amazing pick picks and all the little things. And then your bodice and your legs can be um, just the same color combinations. Um, now I use the fishnet on her legs. I think it looks really cool. I think it's fun. I did not wire her legs, but you can, when you're done making her, before you add all the stuff, you would just put a little tiny hole way up here, right at the seam, run a piece of wire down the back of her, don't go all the way to the bottom of her heel, just go to about there and just run that piece of wire in there and then just put a dot of glue back up there where you put that hole if you need them to be wired. I don't know anybody wants to bend these legs, but if somebody did, they could, all right? I did not put wire in her. Um, I was going to do this flower to the side um, and have the, the skirt kind of fold over that way, but I didn't like it. I didn't like the way it looked. Um, I love to layer trims. So I have, I have the purple centerpiece. This white with the little thing, it's called Peacot. It's... You can sell it's satin ribbon with those little tiny uh, little loops on the sides, like granny panty trim a little bit, just smaller. You know what I mean? So it's just called Peacock. You can get this anywhere in any color you need. Hobby Lobby will definitely have that. Then I put this big silver trim, and then I put on top of it, I put this black sequin trim. I love to layer trims. Um, it just, and I use the exact same combination here on the hat. I put the silver on there and then you can barely see it, but that black sequin trim is right there on top of it. Um, I just like the way it looks. It looks so much better. But now down here on the boots, I put this, um, this is just a silver uh, satin. Like this purple up here is satin, basic satin. You get it anywhere, Hobby Lobby or Walmart or Joann's. So I glue the piece of satin on here. Now I only put the buttons on the front part. I didn't put the buttons on the back. But I did put the lace all the way around. Now you could put three more buttons. If you want to add buttons on both sides, absolutely. But I put the satin down and then I just glue the lace over it. And then I put a little, just a little band right there. I didn't want anything big. And I was going to put um, feather boa on there. And I just thought, well, feathers, I'm trying to stay within a Victorian look and not a burlesque look. And I think I mentioned that before when I made this. My mind, if I wanted to do burlesque, Absolutely, she would be different. You know, she would have feather bow. I would definitely put feather bow up here across the bodice. I would, I would do all the and feathers around the hat. I mean, you can absolutely make her um, more burlesque look. But I was, I was going for more of the Victorian look on her. So that is why I chose to put back the feather boas. But you all know how much I love the feather boas. Okay. So basically, it's a fairly simple pattern. I'm getting the fishnets on is probably the most complicated part. So I'm going to have to put this to the side because I want to show you what we're going to do. You guys know me. Um, I am not going to make the same witch twice ever or anything really. I, I just have so many ideas. I feel like if I made the same thing, I would, you know, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be any fun. Put it that way. <laughs> it wouldn't be fun because I like using all the different things that I have. So that way I can show you. Let me turn on this light. Excuse me. I'm reaching across. There we go. We need just a little bit more light on here. 
I'm going to put my sewing machine together here because I haven't done that yet. There we go. I have to reset everything up every time I do one of these. Okay, so you guys, I bought this amazing fabric from Joann's. I love it. It's the Harlequin with the sequins on it, and it's it's a very deep, deep um, red. Not a bright red, it's a deep red. Put that aside for now. So this is going to be the centerpiece on my bodice because I don't want to do the same thing. I could make another purple one just like I showed you, but I wanted to show you how you can do whatever, whatever color you have here. My biggest thing right now is I cannot find red roses um, that are this color. And a a, a um, Valentine's Day red rose is not the color I'm looking for. I'm looking for this deep, uh, I, I get only what they call it like a blood red. That is the color that I want. And I cannot, could not find that particular color within a two day notice. You know what I mean? So I wasn't able to find a pick or anything with these colors in it. So the hat Probably not going to be done as um, elaborately as I would like to do it, but um, at least you'll get an idea of um, how I'm picking and choosing and what I would put if I could find it, that sort of thing. Okay, so we have our bodice, but now our bodice, we don't need to do anything with yet. Now listen guys, my bodice, the back of my bodice on this one is felt and the front is the faux leather. I wanted to show you, you don't have to do, if you have just a little bit of this faux leather and you know, you want to do the two boots and you want to do, your back can be felt. It's really not going to matter. You can use whatever, whatever inexpensive fabric you have back there. It's the back. Okay, but first we're going to work on sewing our legs and our bodice. Those are the only pieces that are sewn. And because I like the fishnet stocking so well, and I did one of these already because I just wanted to save some time, but I'm going to show you step-by-step step on this one and then we'll put it all together. I think it's cute. You do not, you do not have to. That gray and black striped um, fabric that I used on the black and white version of this switch or the black and gray, um, I got that black and um, gray stripe at, at Joann's and it makes for a great muted toned witch leg. Now, would I love to find lime green and black stripes? Absolutely. It's just not going to happen. I mean, not right now. Let's pray that sometime for Halloween, somebody is going to have it. Now, it's important to line these up as close as you can get them. And remember, when you sew this um, netting, it's it has a cut edge on it. So, it's really important that you sew in a good, I would give yourself a half an inch maybe. You know, you want to, you don't want to do a skinny little seam on the edge because um, some of this has cut edges on it already and it's just not going to hold for you. Okay, so we'll start with one. So I have my boot right sides together. Okay, whenever you're getting ready to sew, right sides together. So you can see the leather is in here. Well, you can't see that. Notifications. Um, right sides together. Because I want the fish netting to be on the outside, I need to put put the right, that would be my right side. Where the fish net is is my right side. The bottom layer, this is the right side. So we're putting right sides together. I'm going to sew that. All right, what happened to my thing? There we go. <laughs> All right, so then when you pull it up, you can see this is going to be the outside of your boot right here and your leg. Okay, so we're going to flip it around like that. Line up your fabric with your netting if you choose to use the netting. Right sides together again. Obviously, guys, you do not have to use the netting. To me, it was just a fun, unique accent that just gives it that little bit of a 
wow factor. You know, people see that and they go, oh my gosh, she's got fishnet stockings. That is so cool. I mean, how many attachments out there do you see with fishnet stockings? Really? <laughs> so, um, and it's, it's not something you can really do with a no sew. When you do fishnets and things like this, you really need to have it. You need to sew it in there to make it look authentic. All right, so I put some pins there because I really want to hold that in place. And we're going to sew all the way around. But first, I'm going to go through my layers here. I'm going to make sure everything is lined up pretty good. And again, I'm going to go ahead and just right off the bat, I'm going to give myself about a half of an inch. Um, I don't know, somewhere between a quarter inch and a half an inch. Um, seam allowance just because I want to catch all of that netting in there. Ouch, that was a pin. slow when you're getting around. Um, the most important part of a witch boot is that pointed toe. You don't want to botch that. You know, that that's a big, that's a big deal on your witch boot. So be sure. Okay. So you can see it, it all kind of got a little bit crooked. So what I'm going to do like right here, this area where the, all four of these fabrics or six of these fabrics meet up is always the worst area. So I'm gonna just go ahead right now and reinforce that. Um, just from, from doing this so many times, I'm just gonna go ahead and just reinforce that. So on the what I do before I flip it around is I'm gonna open up my seam and I'm gonna make sure I see all, I see both pieces of netting inside of here. And there isn't any places where the netting on either side, either piece of it like disappears inside. Cause if it disappears inside, that means you're gonna have a hole when you flip it around. So right here when we get to the very top, right at the very top, the one part of the netting just kind of, all I'm seeing are little sprigs sticking through here. So I'm gonna reinforce that too. Trust me guys, it's so much easier to do this now than it is to flip it around, realize you have a hole, flip it back around, fix the hole, flip it back around again. I mean, it, it's very, it's very difficult. So now I'm doing it on this side too. And even though I'm not seeing a lot of netting sticking through here, I can tell that it's sewn both both pieces and both pieces are sticking through. They're not sticking through far, but they're sticking through enough that I know there's not a hole, okay? As we get to the top, it's gonna be kind of be the same. Yeah, no, we're totally good on that side, okay? Way easier to do all of what I just did now than to, like I said, flip it around and have to do all that because um, the more you flip it around, the more chances you have of damaging the fabrics. All right, so when you go, when you go to flip it around, make sure you're going inside all the layers, but in between the layers of netting in here. I wanna go in the middle. So I'm gonna take it all the way to the toe. I'm gonna to open my little forceps. I'm gonna close them and clamp them down. And then I'm just gonna, this takes a little bit of time, but you just, once you get that toe, 
just slow, goodness, something fell. Just slowly start working. And once it gets to the point where you can see the toe, then you want to grab it. Because on this faux leather, especially, if you're pulling it too tightly, one, you'll pop a seam and then you'll have to start over again anyway. Or two, you could um, damage the end of the toe with, those, with the, the grippers on the forceps or hemostats, whatever you want to call those things. I don't know the exact word. But, uh, and then you just keep slowly start flipping it around and don't, don't pull on it too tight. You don't want to pop a seam. Um, this faux leather is a little stretchy and stretchier fabrics tend to pop seams way easier than, now if you're pulling like this and you hear a pop, stop what you're doing and find it because you're going to have to flip it all the way back around and resew it. <laughs> it's okay though. I mean, it's not the end of the world. It's just, you know, if you just go slow with it, don't try to pull it out in one big fail swoop. Um, usually you can just be gentle with it and you do pretty good with it. So all of that that I did um, to make sure the seams were in there and the netting was in there, it definitely paid off because I don't have a single hole. Now, another trick also, which I should have probably done, was you can easily cut your netting piece, you know, a quarter of an inch bigger than your flesh tone piece. That way you are absolutely positively insured to have the netting not be missed when you sew it. You know, make it bigger. That's not going to work. Um, make the netting, because, you know, it doesn't really matter how, if it's inside, it's just in the seam. It doesn't matter if it's bigger than the, the skin tone piece, the cotton piece. So just make it a little bit bigger, and then you know for sure you can't miss it. You just put a note on your pattern, you know, to cut the netting. If you use the netting, a quarter inch bigger. It's just a rectangle. So make the rectangle a quarter inch bigger all the way around. Okay, so now we are going to stuff this little booger. It's important to just do a little cotton ball size to get up into that toe. The very first thing, you do not want to put a big glob, or you really can't in these because they're so thin, but getting it all, getting a little bit into that very tippy tippy toe is very, you do not want your toes to be empty and, you know, you got to get the polyfill all the way in that toe. As I said before, the toe is probably the most important part of the witch boot. That toe is what is going to draw people's eyes. When they see the quality of workmanship that you created that toe and it's not just a regular little boot, um, that's what's going to draw them in. Those little extra details like that really, really make a huge, huge difference. Okay. And as attachment makers, guys, just think about what draws your eyes in. Now, some people, it's colors. You love the bright colors. You love all the, the felts. And, you know, felts come in so many different colors. And, um, you know, this, this, this particular thing that we're making today doesn't have any colors. We're going for a whole different look. Yes, it has red and the other one had purple. But, you know what I'm saying, it's not bright. It is very drab, actually. Um... Maybe this would be a hard sell, but you know what? I don't think so. I think people who see it and see the workmanship on it would be more curious about it um, and finding, you know, the different colors to make their wreath with. Now, you can make the bright orange, lime green, and purple Halloween colors all the time. I mean, those are big sellers. No matter what you do, those... Those colors on Halloween stuff is probably going to sell, but this to me is more, I don't, I don't want to call it artwork, but it's more, it's, there's, there's got to be a specific person looking for something like this. This is not um, general everyday Halloween. Um, people may not ooh and awe over it. Oh, that's so cute. They may be like, wow, that's a little, little risque, you know. It's not, I don't think. But, uh, like, how fun. I think it's amazing. And um, don't ever, like, the fishnets, you know, I was a little worried in the beginning thinking people would think that that is a little risky. But, you know what? I like them. When I put them on and I saw how they stood out on the, I like it. 
and I really don't care what anyone else thinks. You do not have to make it with the fishnets if you feel like that's going in a direction you don't want it to go, but I think it's pretty amazing. This would be a showstopper piece if you put it in your Etsy shop. Um, it would, you know, you could have all your fun Halloween bright colored everything's in there and this one especially if you put it in your own wreath will be you know that little that little thing that might draw people in and be like wow she's you know really talented look at she made that attachment he excuse me he or she made the attachment and the entire wreath around it um, I wish I had the talent guys to teach you all how to put this stuff into wreaths, but honestly, that would require another house because I would have to buy supplies for all of these attachments to put a wreath in. And I have three on the wall behind me that I don't know what to do with. And that's just three. I cannot, and I just cannot imagine what would I do with them all. So um, I leave the wreath making to the wreath makers because it's just too much for me. It's too much. My life revolves around attachments. Um, I wish I had just the ability to buy all of that stuff. I just do not. But you know what? Stick with what, stick, stay in your lane. Stick with what you're good at. Um, try to find something you like to do and stick with it. If you're a, if you're a flipper, a flip flopper, whatever you want to call it, if you're doing a different craft every month because you get bored with the last craft, oh, that's a, one, that's a lot of money that you're putting into a lot of different things. Um, and two, you never get known for that one thing, you know, I, people don't hear my name and immediately think, you know, painting signs. I mean, come on, they don't hear my name and, you know, they, they, it just immediately goes to sewn attachments, really. So not so, well, no sew has gotten popular this year, but up until this past year, you know, I sew everything and that's what people look for when they see my name. So and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with being known for that. It's all right. All right, so this next part is going to be a little trickier. And we have to do it piece by piece by piece. So we want, oh shoot, the pins put marks on that. Okay, this is the front of our bodice. This is the leather piece. This down here is the felt piece. It doesn't matter. The legs can go either way. I did that on purpose. So what we want to do, and I know this is going to be like really weird. I was going to do the legs separate, but I loved the way the bodice looked with the legs attached and the skirt on it. So what we're going to do is sew these legs into the bodice. And um, basically, I have to turn it this way so I can see and make sure my legs are straight. And you want them to be even. You don't want them touching. Um, Got a little have that little bit of a thigh gap there. And I'm going to pin these right where I want them. Like that. I'm going to take my backing piece. Now, on the backing piece, and I should have thought about this before, I should have, I didn't bring any extra. I should try to think of how, oh, there's some felt. Hold on, we're going to do felt. I see a little bit over here. Yay. Okay. So we're going to, we're going to sew some tabs. This felt has other things on it, but we're going to use it anyway. You got to have something for your customers to attach to, right? So I'm just cutting strips. Not getting, not getting too fancy here. Okay, we're going to set this. Well, we'll just move. I don't want to, if I mess it up, it's going to twist around and get crazy. So we have our backing piece, right? Um, this will be the, when, when we're all said and done, this part is going to be the inside because we're going to flip it like this, right? With the legs coming down. So we, this is the back of the backing. And I'm just going to take a strip fold it in a third of the way, fold it in a third of the way. We're making the little butterfly tabs right here on the back somewhere. 
And this allows the wreath maker to put a pipe cleaner or wire or something to the back of her. Now I'm putting these ones up a little bit higher because we don't want we don't want it just to attach at the bottom because then the top will flop over. But I'm actually going to put four in. I'm going to put all four of these so that the wreath maker has the option to use all of these tabs. And to keep her in, if, she, if her bodice is in the center of a wreath, that's a pretty big hole in the center. So she might need four different pipe cleaners going four different directions um, to hold it in there and be stable. Does that make sense? Because you're not going to have anywhere to hook the pipe cleaner directly behind it because it's basically the hole of the wreath, the center of the wreath. So I like to just, I mean, it didn't take me but two seconds to sew those four tabs on, okay? Now we want those tabs to be on the outside, remember? So we have, when we sew, we sew right sides together. This would be the right side. This is the right side, meaning the outward side that people are going to see. So now we're gonna line up our corners here. First, get your corners all squared off and then go back and I'm going to use the existing pin that I'd already put in there and I'm going to take it out and I'm going to put it right back in to keep that leg in place. So I'm going to go to the next one, take out that pin and then put it through all both layers plus that. And now we're gonna sew across the bottom and what that's gonna do is sew those legs into the bodice. And we're not gonna do anything on the sides, just the bottom. Give yourself a good solid quarter to a half an inch seam. You don't, again, you don't want to lose any part of the legs, you know. And you can even go back and forth over the leg part if you want it to be more secure, like this. you open it up you can see <clears throat> the legs are sewn into the bodice so now what we do we can we can kind of turn these legs out of the way because we just want to sew up the two sides that is it so it does not matter where the legs are line up your very top corner up here place a pin in it now, if I was doing this on the table, it'd be easier because everything's falling off over here. But just, and then we're just all the way down. We're going to pin this side. Just, it doesn't matter where the boots are. Just let them dangle out the top. It's no big deal. Oh, no, I did that. And we're going to go all the way down. And we're just lining it up. That's all. So that we can sew this, sew down this one side. And this is... It's gonna. It's kind of a mess. It's kind of bulky, but all you're concerned with is making sure that this side stays nice and flat, and you sew it nice and evenly. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. So we're gonna. Move these boots out of the way just so that we can get to it. Kind of start from the bottom down here. Put some pins in. Like that. Okay, 
so now we've basically made this pocket, right? This is all sewn on the sides, but the top is open. So now we can just grab it, flip it around, throw our legs off to the side here. And look at there. Our legs are sewn into the bodice. Let's go and push out the little corner here. Out both of the corners and when you lay it flat look at your legs are sewn in and you flip it over you have your four tabs on the back for your wreath maker whomever that is to attach to now at this point if you wanted to add wire this is the time that I would do it I would just poke a little hole between the netting here run your wire in there Put a dot of glue right there simple easy i mean go ahead and do it now you it won't be in the way your legs are just sticking out there so just go right ahead so now we're going to stuff our body part we want to make sure we get polyfill into these little corners these little corners are kind of what hold the but think of them like the hips. They're going to hold that little bit of a skirt up and make the skirt flare out just a little bit. And I could have just gone straight down, but it wouldn't have had it wouldn't have had the same effect. So I liked having I wanted her to have sassy little hips there to hold the skirt up. Trying to get it into all the areas. You don't necessarily want lumps and bumps. I'll flatten it out. So now what I do is I come up here, I take, I go to where the little V is, and I'm going to pin that little V just so that I keep everything lined up as I'm shoving with polyfill here. Putting a pin right dead center in that V right there. So it looks like that. And now I'm going to get make sure that each side has got enough polyfill in it that, you know, it's, oh, that's actually pretty good right there. And we're just now, we're going to sew this top part. Once we make sure it's got enough polyfill, I'm gonna put in just a couple of pins. This should line up pretty easy for you because the polyfill already has it in place for the most part. So see how it looks like that? We're just, we are gonna sew this just like it is. And later, we're going to put trim over this or feather boa or whatever you want to put on yours. Um, so you're not going to see the seam up here. And really flatten it as you're pushing it through your sewing machine. You want this little edge to be, you want the two fabrics to be even. And then use your finger to push in any polyfill that might be poking out. And there we go. And now you can kind of, you know, push the polyfill around and make her, but you can see there, it's an ugly seam up here, but we're going to cover that, right? Because if it's ugly, we make it pretty. All right, so, whew, that's a lot of work, right? So we have her cute little long legs and her cute little bodice. I think it's adorable. Okay, what next, what next? I don't know what I brought in here. So I have got, I uh, can show you, it's just a bin filled with trims and things and all the things and the things. Um, it's a lot and I haven't, I haven't designed this one yet. So we're designing this live right now because I bought a, brought a bunch of stuff I thought would coordinate, but it doesn't mean it will, you know? It doesn't mean I'm going to like it. Oops, I guess I didn't need that. 
Um, and we're done with the sewing. So let me get the sewing machine out of the way real quick. Give us some room. Pull this little guy out of here. All righty. Now, grab your hot glue gun because this is where things get fun. Now, this is where your creativity comes into play. Um, you are not going to be able to find every single product that I'm showing you here. You are not going to be able to find every pick the same. This is where you're going to have to kind of figure, first figure out your colors. Secondly, figure out how you're going to put your colors on your, are you going to do stripe legs? Are you going to do, what color are you going to put down the center of the bodice, the um, corset? Um, you know, these are all the things you can, you can draw it out and kind of figure it out in your head. Um, this is that um, plush felt, velvet, no, plush velvet that I got the other day. Um, it's not red red. It is the exact same dark deep red that is in this. So I'm going to use this. This little piece here is what I use on the front of the boot. It's kind of, I don't know what, it's where I'm going to put the little beads. It's where I'm going to put some trim around it and some, maybe even some, um, some lace. But this red is going to tie in with the red up here. And I should have brought some more. I do want some more of it in the hat. I'll have to go out and grab it. I didn't bring any more in with me. So basically, because I can't find red flowers, somehow I'm going to do a sash with this red in the hat so that it ties in with all the other reds. Everything is going to be black on this witch, except for some of the trims and then these two fabrics. So the easiest way to put this on is literally put a line directly down the center and then line that line up with the seam on the front of your boot. So just like that. I know, I probably did that too fast, so here. Um, just directly down the center. And what that does is it makes sure it centers it on your boot. Oops. And then put that line down basically right down the center. So the, the, the sides are not glued down yet, but that center line is. And we'll just let that cool just a little bit, kind of push it down. Just If you're using satins or something, you want to do And the reason I do that now is once that is in place, then it's very easy to pull this taut. See what I mean? Um, it can bunch up on you like it is right here. It's just all bunchy and it doesn't look right. Um, but once you glue that center piece down, then you can grab this, this fabric has a bit of stretch to it and you can pull it taut so that it's not gonna have any bunching. So I put some glue on the back, not a lot, and then I just tug on it. Oops. And you're gonna put trim around the edges. I'm not gonna worry about that glue that I just globbed out there. Um, when it cools off, I might, well, let's see, I can, it's cooling off, so I can just use my fingernail and kind of get it off of this faux leather. If this were felt, I would let it dry completely and then just use my little snips. But because this leather is kind of slick, I'm able to use my fingernail and get it off just like that. Okay, so let's do this one. And I won't pull this one quite as hard as I pulled the other one. So I think that was where I messed up. And you're just going to pull it and make sure it's... That way it's molded to the top of the shoe and is not bunching up anywhere. Okay? I hate black belt. I love the look of black felt. I just hate that it picks up every little thing. Okay, same thing with the front. Now the front I'm going to try to be a little more conscientious of. Pull it so it's nice, just like that. Now, if I had found a red satin, or I, I didn't really look actually, I haven't had time, that was this color, I might have used the red satin, but since I knew I already had this 
um, flush velvet. I just grabbed it. I knew it matched. I knew it looked okay. See, when you're choosing your fabrics, sometimes you don't you don't get the fabric that you think you need. Sometimes you have to just get what you can. Um, you know, right now, this time that we are not in the Halloween season, we're not going to find things with Halloween colors anywhere. So you just have to kind of get creative and make do. I'm going to cut this little end off here, it's sticking out this one too. I don't really want, um, I don't want my trim to go out that far. So I'm just going to trim this off just a bit. Probably have to add a little more glue, but. There we go. So over here, just gonna add just a little bit more glue, hold it down. That one's good. Okay, like that. And let's see, what do I have? I have, I have sequin trim. This is the peacock I was telling you about. The satin. Um, of course, I buy huge rolls, but obviously don't have to. I have this is an Expo International. I actually got this off of Amazon. You can buy it in rolls like this of five yards or nine feet, actually, or you can buy this in like 20 yards. It's got some gold in it, and I'm I'm okay with the gold. I kind of like the gold. I might, I don't know if I want that's a little bit too much red. So see, and then I've got this gold. This is probably the most popular trim you will if anybody out there makes an attachment it doesn't even matter it's going to have this gold trim on it you get it at hobby lobby and by the roll it looks like this i'm telling you this this trim every single wreath maker out there attachment maker out there uses this trim on something it's just so popular i have the big uh this is like an inch and a half lace and I thought I had the other lace. So there's there's things in the other room that I might have to go grab that I just forgot about. So like this is a really cute, this will look really good on the hat. It will look really good on the sides of the bodice up here because it's so big. But I would never put it down here on the boot. Okay, wait, I say never, but now I'm looking at that gold with that red. The gold with the red, okay. Honestly, that's I wasn't expecting that. I'm kind of digging that. Hmm. See, I was like all ready to just do, you know, some black and black and make it, you know. I don't know. What if I did what if I did gold and then did the black over it? I don't even think it needs the black over it though. Not on this one. Okay, yeah, we're using the gold on the boots. See? This is, I 100% have not designed these yet. I'm just doing this as we're going here. I thought this would be way too big. But now, normally I would put a trim and then I would put some lace on this. But I don't want to put, if I put this, then I do not, I do not have to add lace to that. I, I'm liking the look of that. I know it's hard for you to see the boot because it's black. But that looks pretty awesome right there. We're going to go for it. I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to think twice about it. I'm going to commit and just do it. I did not anticipate liking this. I did not anticipate. See, I'm going to put black um, rhinestones as my buttons. So it's going to get more black on it. And I don't feel like it needs lace or sequins. I'm kind of digging it, guys. See, I love when things happen like that. I don't plan it. I couldn't have gone to the store and bought all this stuff knowing full well what I was going to do with it. And that's another thing. When you do finally decide what your color combination is going to be, buy several trims. This week at Hobby Lobby, I know I've, I don't know when you guys are going to be watching this video, but you can get trims half off every other week, but it's not the same week the fabrics are on sale. So you have to plan it. <laughs> If, if, but you know what? This little thing of, not that one, This it's it's two ninety nine. I mean, to me, when I'm there and it's not on sale, I still buy it. Two ninety nine is not that expensive, but 
if you're there and you know you want this gold, you want this gold trim on your your little girl here, then watch the go get the the flyer for you know what's on sale. Check online and uh, buy buy two or three of them. I promise you, as a wreath attachment maker, you will use it on other things. I, it. <laughs> telling you it is such a popular trim I try not actually honestly try not to use it that often because it is so widely used I have nothing against it I'm just not big on gold I'm more of a silver person I just happened to have a few rolls of this and I grabbed it I didn't plan it this was not a I did not say hey let's do let's do gold as my because I really didn't know, but once I grabbed my red trim here that has gold on it, I grabbed this other one that's gold in case I needed another gold. And the um, the sequins on here in the in the lighter parts are actually gold, so it's still tying into all the gold. So it just worked out. That's all. Ouch. I haven't decided what I'm going to put up around the ankles on this yet. I really don't know. Um, got to put something, but we'll come to that. You don't have to do it all at once. Sometimes things come to you, and it, it may be you be, might be looking at something you didn't, didn't ever even plan, like this gold. Like all of a sudden, you're like, wait a second, that works. I like that. So I know I want these little rhinestones as my boot buttons. So we're going to go ahead and put those on. But we're not going to put anything around the ankle yet. It is really messy. It needs something for sure. It is definitely, it can't stay like it is. Um, but I'm going to have to figure out what I want up there. And maybe when I do the bodice or I do um, the hat, I will find something that will catch my eye and I will say, oh, that would look good around. Because I want to tie in, you know. I want to use things in the bodice, in the hat, in the boots that all kind of, not all the exact same things, but at least one thing that is similar. Or even the same, you know, the same exact product. So this gold trim, now that I've used it on here, is probably going to go up here in the bodice for sure. And I, if I have enough, I will probably put this around the edge of the brim of the hat because it's a good size and I like it. Um, I had initially thought I was going to use this, but I like the way this is going to hang over the edge of the hat. And like I could even do that and really jazz it up and do it like that. We'll see. We'll see what. So I'm going to put the boots. We have not done the ankles, but that's okay. We're going to work on the bodice now. And I'm going to take my strip that I cut out like that. Now she's going to have a skirt around her, so I don't really need to do much from here down. Um, I will finish it. I'm not going to leave it ugly under there in case somebody, you know, looks behind her skirt. But um, you don't have to worry about putting too much product down there. So I'm going to line up the V up here at the top. And remember, this is going to have lace over the top up here. So... I don't have to be um, precise with this, but I'm going to put some glue to hold this in place. Just like, just like that. It just, I just kind of fit it in there like that. Okay. I don't know if you can really see it. It's not perfect in there, but remember lace, 100% covering all of that. So, so now I'm just going to pull it back and then slowly start adding, you know, every inch or two, make sure it's nice and smoothed out. Pull it back again, do some more zigs. Now, if you're using satin, you only want to glue on the edges. Don't glue in the middle because you're going to see all those zigzags. Satin does not, you will see everything with satin, okay? Don't put hot glue behind satin except on the very edges, unless you plan to cover it, and that's totally different.
I just keep going. Now I'm going to probably do the rest of this. I think this one, I cut it just a little bit long. So I might have to trim some of this off. Ow. Come here. Curling up on me. Ow, oh, shoot. I have her come this way so I can see it. There we go. Yeah, she's a little bit long. Actually, I'm not going to trim it. I'm just going to kind of, it's just kind of sitting in that crease between the, well, maybe I have to I'll trim a little bit of that. I don't want it to bunch up between her legs. That would look silly. There. A little bit of glue. Easily pick it off with my fingernail. There we go, both sides. So there. So I'm already loving that Harlequin in there. I think that looks amazing. I have no room here. <laughs> I keep closing myself in. Do you guys do that? Like you start out with a whole cutting mat and then you start putting stuff everywhere. Next thing you know, <laughs> you've completely closed yourself in and you have no room. Okay, so now I want to decide if we want that. That's a lot. That is a lot. But that's what we're here for, right? Let's try it with just this. This is more of a red red, though I don't hate it. With the gold, it kind of um, tones it down a bit. And then of course we have the plain black which is just blah. I mean, you can't, I mean, I like the sequin, but I don't, let's see. What if I did gold? Instead of doing the red, if I did the gold. If I can uncurl the black sequin, do the black sequin over it, then all you see No, I'm not liking that either. Not liking that at all. The black just kind of muted it all. I want this to stand out. So I'm guessing this red is definitely what I need to, to use on this. Um, we're still having the little triangles from this gold trim. So it still ties in with this down here, but then this red and gold sequin trim just makes all of this pop. I, I don't want to do just the gold. To me, that's just a little, I don't know. I think she, she deserves more than that. Um, I could not do that at all and just do, I could do the lace like that. Of course, you really can't see it because it's black. But then do the red over the lace like that. I know this, my mind is working. Sorry for the sorry for the pauses, but this is how I plan things. I definitely don't go into every project with knowing exactly what's going to happen. Okay. Looking at this, I love the dimension and the triangles that this puts off because of the Harlequin. Um, it really, it fits. Um, aesthetically, it fits. I love the lace too. The lace is, um, you can't really see it on camera too well, but it's very pretty in person. Let me stand up and look. I really want to make sure I do. Okay, standing up. Now that I have both sides on, I'm, I think I think I'm going with this one. I think I'm going to go with the gold because we're going to have lace up at the top anyway. So I just I like the way this is triangles, and then these come off as little triangles, and then it's just a little bit lighter, and then the red really makes all of it pop. Okay, see. These are the things you have to talk to yourself while you're doing this, okay? So if I didn't have you guys here, I would totally still be talking to myself. So, um, 
it's just, you know, it's important. And you know, you don't want to glue something on and then realize you hate it. So but we are committing to this. I like it. I like the way it brought out the red Harlequin. And that's, to me, that's the most important part of this that I want to highlight is this amazing red Harlequin fabric. So, and by having the other red trim that is a little bit brighter red, it draws your eyes in. It really uh, makes you look, and then you see the all the reds. It's just, it just it really looked nice to me. It really looked. Okay, I need some more of this. They do make this gold trim right here. They do make one that has black woven into it. I don't have any of that, but instead of have this has gold and then it has little white threads woven into it. They make one with black and I'm pretty sure I saw it at Hobby Lobby in the same rolls, but it's um, gold with, it's just, it just has a, a black thread in it. So it's not totally black, it's still gold but it has that black accent. So anyway, that would be a good one too, as far as for Halloween stuff, it would be a good one. I like the gold, but this needs a pop. This is the main centerpiece. Don't be afraid to mix your colors and mix your things and make, you know, like I second guess this red because it's a bright red, but once I put it on there, it's gotta be there. It's got to be. It really brings life to this whole center um, of the bodice here. A little extra glue down there. Now, if, you know, if I had thought this through and planned this out, I might have chosen, made, I might have gone to the store and made different choices, but um, when you're there shopping for your trims, if it's something in your color scheme, but you're not sure about it, and it's $1.50, just go ahead and grab it. I promise, just like what I just did, you may not like it on the roll, but once you put it in your project, you might be like, oh, wait a second that works that looks good you know and these aren't two that i would necessarily have put together but i'm making it work all right we're making it work there we go now because this is harlequin back here um i do have the peacock but i don't know if i really want to put these lines i don't think it needs it you know the little laces um if it was a solid background like the um purple was or even the gray one that we did. I mean, yeah, then you definitely want the lines, but this is just gonna be, it's gonna be way too busy. I don't I don't like that at all. So we're not gonna use the peacock on that. And um, we're just gonna, just gonna go with the Harlequin and, um, and all that it brings, because it brings a lot. Now we need a piece of lace up here. And now you're gonna get it all of your fingers, so this is where if you have those little rubber things, little silicone things, go ahead and use them. There's no, I mean, lace is lace. There's no protection for your fingers when you do this. You just kind of have to, like we did with 
like you do with sequins, just kind of tap it into place without actually squeezing it too hard and burning your fingers. And getting all the hundreds of glue strings because I don't know I hate dang glue strings. Just gonna keep moving all the way across the very top. I'm gonna hide all of that seam that we had up there. But we don't want a ton of glue eking out, so don't uh, don't go too crazy with the glue. And on the black, especially with the lace, you know the glue dries and it. It's not white, it's clear, but you can still see it on black stuff. Like it, you know, it looks like rubber, plastic, or whatever. So, should I use this? Oops, I just moved it. I was trying. <laughs> Sometimes it's just not easy for, even though I've made, this is my fourth or fifth one of these. I still have to struggle with all the little things. I'm using this, I'm just kind of pinching it together. Right here where I just moved it, I have a big ugly glue glob. I don't like that. I'll have to figure something out with that. I might put another layer of some kind of lace. I don't, you probably, I don't know if you can see it, but right there, a big ugly glob of glue. And I don't like that. Or I could just cut it off maybe. The rest of it did fine. That one, that was the one spot where I hit it with a silicone mat and it smeared everywhere. Once you smear hot glue, game over. If ever you get hot glue on stuff, just let it cool. Let it dry. Let it, and then you just pick it off with your fingernail <laughs> or with a you know little little pair of snips like this. Try not to smear it. Once you smear it, you can't get it off again, and that's what happened there. All right, so there is our cute little cute little bod. Very fun colors, it's different colors. I don't think this is something that most people would maybe put together. Let's see, we could, oh, I don't like the lace on there. Ooh. I don't like the lace at all. Oops, what else do I have in my little bag of tricks? I think that's all I grabbed. I had so many more with the other ones that I did. Oops. Um, but I left them all in the other room. Oh, just a black, a basic black band right here. I could go get feather boa, but again, I don't, it's not really a direction I want to go. I just need something to cover the top of this boot. And I think this black band of sequins will be perfect. It's it's enough to cover all the ugly stuff, but it's also enough to make it look like the top of the boot, um, and it's not really gaudy. Mm. I just want to cover all of this stuff just like that. And yeah, I could go on the other one. You guys know I have hundreds and hundreds of trims, but you know, I'm trying to just go with what I initially chose because, you know, once you go to Hobby Lobby or wherever and buy all your trims, I mean, unless you live really close, which I do not, it's not convenient to just have to run back and grab another one because I didn't like the way the other one looked. You know, I have to, I have to commit to the things that I chose. And because uh, I'm not running back to another store or whatever to get more. That's why I say when you're there and if it's, well, even if it's not on sale, it's not that expensive for like three yards. Um, grab all of it. Grab one of each or two. I, I, I always grab two. I mean, I always have to have two of everything. That's just me. Um, if it's on sale, I always, obviously, always going to buy two. If it's not on sale, probably still going to buy two. Yeah, I like that up there. It, it shows the definition of the boot from the leg, but it's not big and ugly and gaudy. Um, this is gaudy enough, you know, <laughs> down there. That, that's definitely gaudy enough. Look at the, look at the, that trim on those boots maybe wouldn't have been my first choice, but honestly, now that it's there, I'm okay with it. She's going to be a little more gaudy than the, the other ones were very muted and dull. This one's going to be much more baboon in your face. Okay. 
So in your pattern, there is no, there is no pattern for the skirt because you're just bunching it up and wrapping it around your waist. Um, I will tell you, start out with something that's, I just, you know, if this is the fabric, I just cut a strip, right? I cut a strip. You want it to be, if it's up on her waist up here, you want it to be, you know, above her boot line. You don't want it to be this long at all. Um, okay, I'm getting, okay, I have to put some stuff up because this is sticking to everything like Velcro. Put it all this way for a minute. And there is no way I can give you a pattern for this. It's approximately 12 inches tall, but you know, it's really, you just cut a strip of lace tool. Um, I got this tool. The other, the other girl I did had tool, one of these three yards of fabric, same thing. You want it to be bunched up and you want it to make, a, you know, something that looks kind of like a skirt. And I love, 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 love this fabric or whatever this is, knitting, mesh, whatever. It does have some bling in it. So what I do is I just put her on it. Now this is still way too long. So I'm just going to bunch it up. I don't, I don't want it. Oh, well, I guess I can leave it that long for the moment. So I'm going to bunch up the sides. Now, listen, you can, you can sew and you can make this skirt all perfect, but I, I just didn't feel like I needed to do all that. I just, Literally, guys, I'm just going to bunch it up. I'm going to use a couple of pipe cleaners, pieces of pipe cleaner. And I'm going to make sure it goes over. Now, honestly, I, I actually want this to be double. I want it to be pretty thick. I don't want a single layer. Um, I did With tool, you definitely want it to be two layers. So I'm going to place the other end on this like that. Kind of try to line it up just a little. I just want it thicker. I want it to be um, like that. But you don't have to. That's just me. And I'm going to put her on here to where the back of the skirt is basically right above, right at her ankle there. And I'm going to get my scissors. So this is over. I mean, you want it to go towards about at the center right there. Maybe a little more. Move it over just a bit. I mean, because the other side's going to meet in the middle here too. And then you're going to cut off all the excess. So, sorry my big head is in the way here. But I just want to cut. There. And I save this little extra scrap piece to put on the hat. Okay. So now I have this piece. It's roughly, I don't know, 12 inches by... I don't even know, 22, 24 inches, something like that. It, it really doesn't matter because you're bunching it all up. So I like to start. I'm just going to bunch this up. And what I'm looking for, I want this whole end to be bunched up like that. And then when you bring it over, it creates this like V right there. But it's really really poofy and it's got lots of little lines in it. It's not flat. And when you're using the tool, that is especially important because tool can look very blah. So you want all of that. So I bunched all that up. I'm just going to take a piece of pipe cleaner for right now. And we're going to, oops, I didn't quite do them long enough. That's okay though. We'll get it on there. We're just going to twist tie it there just like that. We do the same thing on the other side. Start at the bottom, bunch it all the way up like that. Put a pipe cleaner on where you're holding it. Now I'm going to have to come up with something that is a rose or something. Now on these ends, I'm just going to trim them to the pipe cleaner. I don't, that, those are not going to work. I don't want all these extra little things because they'll just get in the way. And you see that? I didn't measure anything there, guys. I bunched it up. I made it about 
from the waist to the ankle and then I'm, I just bunched it all up and that's the look that I don't, it doesn't have to. And then these two pieces that you have pipe cleanered kind of meet right in the center there. And what you have is this poofy little skirt that comes up at a V in the front. But we are gonna hot glue this front right here. And then on the other ones, I put a flower. All I have to, I wish I had a flower that had red in it, but I don't. So I'm gonna be forced to put a black flower right here. Um, I, I would prefer to have something with a little red. I just don't have any right now, okay? I don't want full red, but I like the flowers that have like the black leaves and then the red center. And none of this is like, none of this is attached or anything. This just looks just like this. <laughs> I'm just putting it on there. Um, you can get a pattern for a skirt. If you want an actual skirt, I don't even know. I just did not want like a, a skirt. I don't want to cover any of this goodness in these legs. I tried doing it to the side. I didn't, want, didn't like that either, right? So I'm just, I just wanted, I wanted her legs to show. I wanted all of this with the flower at the bottom. It highlights all of this. This is, this is, you know, my thought process here. You do all this work. You certainly don't want to hide it behind a skirt. But the reason I love this fabric is it is glittery. So you can see the glitter behind the legs in the inside of the legs. You can see glitter on the outside. It's actually tinsel. It's not glitter. Um, when you use regular fabric, what you see in between the legs here is the underside of the fabric, and it might be dull. It may not be... Um, I liked this. I chose this because it had the tinsel woven all the way through it. So no matter where you're looking at this little skirt that I have going here, and this is why I have these poofy little hips over here to hold the skirt outward to make it poof out. I wanted her to have hips. And this is how I make it. This is how I made her have hips. But um, I, I like having, when you, no matter what way you look at this mesh skirt, and Tool does the same thing, um, you see the actual um, tinsel and you're not seeing the inside of the fabric. So, and I'm going to put glue there. I'm going to put some glue in the middle. I'm just kind of letting it cool as I go. Um, you know, it's not totally cool, but I'm going to flip her over. And this is where I'm just going to kind of tuck this under. It doesn't need to be that high up her back. And what I'm going to do here, just because I don't want it sliding down, I'm going to put glue. This is netting. I'm going to put a line of glue just to hold up the back. And I'm not going to put line of glue on the hips. I'm not going to glue the, because I don't want any of that glue showing through. Right? But I, with a line of glue back here, it's going to hold that skirt. <laughs> I got glue strings again. It's going to hold that skirt in place. It's not going anywhere. And then up here, you have this. And I have these knots almost down all the way to the, the, the crotch area. You don't want all that showing through. And sadly, like I said, I don't... All I have is a black rose. It kind of makes me sad. Uh, of course, you can always... And it's huge. I would much prefer a much smaller... I hate that. Oh my God, I hate that. Hold on. We might put this up just as a temporary. I've got to find something that looks better. That is huge. That's all I had though. I have ones with purple, so I don't have any with, um, hmm. Okay. Well, you get the idea on this. I am not attaching that rose to it because it looks ridiculous. Sorry, it just does. I, I'm not going to just ruin her because it's all I have. I will find something to put on there. But for this tutorial, if I had a small flower, smaller flower that had maybe had some red in it, like one of the Halloween red roses or a black rose with red tips on it or something to that, um, I would definitely use that. But this is it's way too big. It takes up the whole area there and looks silly. So imagine we did. Okay, that's the best I can do right now. One day when I find the perfect flower, I will put it on there. 
Or maybe we won't do flowers. Hold on. What else do I have in here? Okay, well, I don't really want to use leaves. You know, we don't, we're getting like a... Um, honestly, one of these big glitter spiders might work too. You can't really see it. But I have some more things like this upstairs. I need to look to see if I have anything that has red in it. Red is not a popular Halloween color, believe it or not. It is not. But okay, so she's... Basically, that's done. Well, you can't see her all. It's done. I am getting so many notifications. Okay, it's done. Um, for the, for now, until I find something to go here. And I'm okay with it. I'm okay with leaving it slightly unfinished until I find the perfect piece right there. And it may not be a flower. It may be something else. Maybe, maybe I find a little red skull. A skull would be cute, right? Or I could paint a skull. Let's see. Well, there's lots of different options you can do. So I'm going to leave her unfinished like this just until I, I have a chance to go upstairs and dig through some bins. But now we need to move on to the hat. So I'm going to set her aside. The hat, this is a no sew witch hat. Um, it is made the exact same way as our no sew top hats. It just is a different pattern. So you have, you have the brim and this stuff I had got was kind of wrinkled. This is the faux leather again. You can use felt. It's fine. We're going to cover it up anyway. I've cut this out to put the faux leather up here, but then I got, I lost it already. I thought I had it. Well, I decided I wanted to put, oh, here it is. I decided maybe to do the bottom of the hat in that and then the top of the hat in the Harlequin to tie in with the, um, the bodice piece. So we're gonna do that, try something different. Now you can do just a plain black hat the exact same way with this, but I'm just substituting for this because I feel like it. Yeah, I feel like it'd be fun. That didn't do well. And yeah. Now for the top piece, you can use the EVC foam or EVA foam, excuse me, the two millimeter, you can use it. Um, it's not as rigid as the poster board. You can glue EVA foam to the poster board to make it more rigid. Um, now, if you're if you're shipping it, maybe you don't want the top hat to be really rigid because in case it gets bumped or squashed in shipping or something and the EVA foam pops right back out. But I want this top hat to be, you know, I want it to stand up. I want it to be firm. And this is the brim of the hat. This is the five millimeter EVA foam. It's a little bit thicker. Now, when we do our sewn top hats, then we will add the wire and I will show you how to make them curl and do all of the things. But with a no sew, you can't really do that. You just have to um, have a solid piece down here. Now, you can do foam board on this too. It's just going to, it's going to stick out really far and you're going to have to come with a big old box to ship this thing. Okay. Cause it's a big hat. So I prefer to use the uh, EVA. It's a little bit more giving. It's not going to break, but you can use the foam board. So again, I've already glued one side of this, just trying to uh, <laughs> make this work better. I don't know if you all can hear the birds, but apparently my mom is playing with them and they're having a fit out there. <laughs> and we're just going to glue this. Make sure you glue all the way to the edges. That's the most important part. And the rest of it, we're going to swiggle. Felt is honestly the best thing to use on these brims of hats. It, like, even with this, I just got glue everywhere. You can still kind of see and feel the squiggles of the glue lines under this. Not that you're really going to see it because, of course, we're going to, you know, cover it with flowers or whatever we can find. But um, felt, you can't see or feel any of it. So you can, if you're using felts, then just go ahead and use it on the hat. It will work just fine. So we're trimming all this stuff. Okay. 
So that's the brim. I mean, it really doesn't get much more difficult than that. I would use my hole puncher and punch holes, maybe even four holes back here so that there's several to choose from depending on what part of their wreath they're going to put it in. And then we will, we're gonna do this first because it's, it's just easier. Now, if you notice, this is not a perfect triangle. It actually juts out further on this side. Um, and these sides, you can see there's a little cut edge this way and then there's a cut edge up here. Um, this is just extra. I mean, think about if you if it was a full triangle, it would be like this, a nice even triangle. This extra little strip I added over here is simply to glue to because ugh, gluing this is not the easiest thing in the world. You really have to, you know, spend time and I like to use a dowel and I run it along and kind of give give the paper a little bit of a curl just to help me out, you know, because it, it really can be hard to get the paper to curl just right in order to um, get it nice and pointy. So the ends that have the little cuts on it like this are gonna overlap your hat part. Um, they are like that, it's like that on purpose. See how I'm, see how I can push that in there just like that. I don't know if you can see this, sorry. See how the, the part, this there's a strip here. That's what I'm gonna use to fold over and glue and you just have to this is kind of why I chose to use the poster board because you can manipulate it you know you can you don't want to crease it but you can kind of hold it um, I'm gonna go ahead and throw some glue in here before I lose it once you get it in a good spot just put some glue I'm only done the bottom so far but we want it to hold that it's not easy guys I mean there's when you're doing uh, the no sew version like this it's just really no easy way I like to put it on the table then I'll put my hand inside and kind of hold it and hope that there's no like hot glue seeping out in there I got lucky this time and I'm just holding it I don't want it to I don't if it pops apart we got to start all over again and you can see now that strip that I that had the notch in it is what I glued and then it actually folded all the way over to make the point on the hat like that and then you just kind of oops just kind of use your hands to make it a circle again because <laughs> your ears might not be it this takes a lot of practice guys so Give yourself time to really maybe do two or three of these. Um, it is a little bit easier with the EVA foam. I will tell you that because it is so soft and it um, it's just not as firm as this. Um, I'm just gluing down this little piece up here because I don't want it to catch on my fabric. So you have this little cone. And I've done it a hundred times. That's the only way reason I was able to make it look easy. But I promise you this is not easy. Um, cut two of these on your first one and make one a practice one. Make one a practice one, you will probably ruin it and have to throw it away because that's just, it takes a while to learn to do this. But if you make it on the, the, the edge of your triangle that has the two little cut notches, if you make sure you that's what you fold over and glue, um, usually your, your cone will come out perfect like this. Just takes practice, okay? So there's no, there's no there's no easy way for me to like make that happen for you, <laughs> unfortunately. And then we are going to kind of put this where you want it. Um, make sure I like to I like to just follow the line that we already have here um, for the um, the back. See, this is our back. This to me would be the back of the hat because it's where the seam is. I will take this piece, make sure it's hanging over the edge down here. Okay. Don't, you don't want any of this white showing. So I put it like that. And again, you're holding it with one hand, 
put some glue on here just to hold it in place. You can always add a little more glue later, but right now you just want that piece to be held right there. And now you can um, add some more glue at this end. Okay. I don't have to glue the whole thing. I'm just rolling it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put glue along right on top of this other place. Actually, I'm going to put glue all the way out to the edge here underneath this. I want this to be held down. So I'm adding, a, I'm adding glue all the way to the edge of this cut piece up underneath so that it's stuck to the paper all the way to this edge. And then as I grab it and roll it, pay special attention, oops, and it's gonna unroll on me. Special attention to the tip up here, make sure you don't forget it. Just lightly. So really all I've glued so far is this line right here. So now I'm going to roll it pretty, pretty tight. You, you don't want there to be any bubbles in it. I'm going to take glue and I'm going to go all on top of the fabric. I'm going to make a nice straight line all the way to the tip. And I'm using the tip of my glue gun to kind of flatten out that glue. And then I'm just going to keep rolling it and it will grab right there. The end, the tip here, you may have to kind of work it around and you just keep rolling it and then you just want to hold it and you're going to have a flap like this that's okay i'm not going to cut it off because that would take too much but i am going to go back on that flap i'm going to put some glue on it so that it it will hold but now it's it's at least it's being held in place i'm going to take i'm going to roll it some more until all of it is nice and glued down. Now, my the tip on this got a little got away from me just a little bit. So, I'm just going to manually come up here, put a little bit more glue on the tip part and hold it down like that. And you just have to kind of baby it. I know it seems kind of silly, but and then what I like to do, all the stuff that's overhanging, I don't cut it off. I'm going to glue it I'm just going to fold it and glue it inside like this. Because I'm going to, it's going to have to be glued to the top of that, um, the brim piece. And I don't want any of that white showing. I don't want any, I don't want it to look, I don't want anyone to be able to see this paper underneath this. So I'm just putting glue along the edge and then I'm just folding it over. This fabric, this uh, Harlequin fabric is very stretchy. It's got a, like a Lycra in it. I mean, it's made to be clothing, I'm assuming, or, you know, costumes. So it does have Lycra in it. So it's quite stretchy. And that, that does make it more difficult to work with. Now, if you're, if you're working with the faux leather, it's not near as um, stretchy and, and difficult. But you know me, I can't do anything. Now, I just noticed I have a piece right here that didn't get glue. So we're going to, we're just going to go back. And slowly tap it. And even though we didn't glue the whole thing, like it's not going anywhere, you know? Ooh, look at that picture. That looks pretty cool, doesn't it? It looks like a flower center. But I didn't put glue anywhere but on these back lines back here. But still, it's, because we the way we rolled it, it looks really good. There we go. So then we take our... base now let's see and I know where my back is my fingers are on my back and this is the part you you have to be when if you've made if you made the top hats you know this is the part that does take a little you got to go a little quick you got to go all the way around this rim we're going to cover this with something so if a little bit of glue gets out or seeps out it's okay if you want to wait till it cools, you can always just like snip it off with a little X-Acto knife. We're gonna set it right 
just look for the center, as close to the center as you can get, and then you have to hold it. Very important to hold this. Um, you don't want it shifting around on you. And this is why we can't put wire in a no sew top or witch hat, because if you try to bend up this edge, it's just gonna pop the top of your hat off. And the wire can only be added to a sewn one, um, in my experience. Now, listen, there are probably people who do wire in the no-sews, maybe a smaller hat, uh, maybe one of the V-cut like top hats because it's cut in smaller at the bottom. It wouldn't pop off, but I know if I tried to grab this right now and curl it up, this top portion is just going to pop right off. I mean, hot glue can only do so much, you know? So there we go. Now let's go back and grab some of our trims. I know we want to put this on there to tie it in with the rest of our um, bodice. So, and I like the way this hangs over the edge. It's got a really cool look to it. And it's gonna cover um, basically that whole bottom, that whole edge there that's exposed. This is gonna kind of hang over and cover that which I like. So just keep working it around. And this is why I say if if you're gonna buy trim, buy two, because this hat, whatever you decide to put around this brim is going to use quite a bit and you don't wanna run short. I mean, that's the last thing you want. So I've used like one, one and a half of these rolls so far because I used it on the boots and on the bodice and now I'm putting it all the way around this hat. So when you find one that you're gonna use, um, definitely buy two rolls, just, it's better to have a little extra than it is to run out. All right, here we go. There we go. And I also, since we did this early, I want this red on here too. Um, I want to make sure we are tying into the same colors we did before. And I like the way this red is going to make this pop. Again. I don't always layer trims, but I do enjoy it. Enjoy the way it looks. And since we don't have anything red to put on the top of this hat, as far as florals or picks right now, until I figure that out. I wanted to have a little more red in it like that. Oops. I think we're good. Here we go. Now we did save this. It's just a, it's a scrap from the skirt. It doesn't have to be a particular size doesn't have to be a square or a rectangle or just because you're gonna you're gonna bunch it up and put it around and it's going to cover all any of that hot glue that was seeping out underneath like that now you can do this with your tool you can do this with anything but I like the way that it looks rich well you can't even see it it looks rich on the hat the base of the hat and it ties in with the skirt and normally this is, it would also be an anchor for you to put your picks and your flowers and your skulls and all the different things you want to put in there. Um, now that I'm looking at this though, I am going to 
just see what this would look like. Is this, I'm just playing, I'm not really, okay, I don't like that at all. It really hides all the red. So, okay, back to where we were. So, I just put some glue very lightly, you know, and I just bunched this up and, you know, make a little sash out of it. It, it will help, like I said, if you're going to put all your picks and florals, it gives something it gives something for them to go into. You certainly don't have to do this. I just like the way it looks. And when you get to the back back here, And now at the back part, you're just you're gonna have to add more glue. Um, there's lots of ragged edges here. Um, just just do your best to get all those little edges glued down. Probably have to just go back one by one and uh, just make sure things aren't sticking out really far. Now on the one that I did that I showed you earlier in this video, the one that I used as my um, I actually put the tool all the way up a lot over this hat, but I had just done the plain black underneath and then I did the black tool over it. So it was very muted and very dull, um, but it was just a different effect that I wanted to try. And I didn't hate it. It was okay, but I definitely did not like the way it looked over this. And let's see. now if we grab this gigantic flower, the flower doesn't look so bad. The flower, you know, being that it's huge, it doesn't look bad. Of course, I don't want to use um, any gray in this one, but I can put a couple of these big giant black roses on here and maybe even some of these. Um, I don't even know what you call this. It's like sawgrass or something, something weird. I might try some of that because it's got glitter on it and it's going to look pretty. I love these old creepy sticks, you know, these old creepy Halloween looking sticks. So we'll definitely use a couple of those. We we'll use black leaves, not the gray leaves, of course. Oh, that didn't work. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to try to find something with red in it. So I'm going to make this all black for now. And then whether I put in a red pumpkin or a red skull or a red flower, that will be done um, as soon as I find something. <laughs> there we go. We'll just take that for now. These are the ones also, this pick was from Walmart Halloween last year. It has black corn stalks in it. Like, how weird. I mean, kind of neat, but kind of weird. I kind of want to do like a scarecrow or something, you know, a pumpkin with these black corn stalks. Just strange. Which is an odd thing to, to add to a Halloween pick or a fall pick. I guess maybe they consider this fall. I'm gonna grab one more of these uh, salt things. All right, I think we're good for now. We have some more on there. So now it's just the decorating part. This is the part that you guys can shine in. So if I were to put two of these roses like this, place this stuff behind it. What I, will, what I would do is leave myself a little bit of room in the center, in the front right here, maybe to put something red, maybe to put something red tucked in behind here. I mean, I'm leaving some, I'm, I still have the anticipation that I'm gonna put something in there when I find it. So for now, we're just gonna throw these gigantic roses on here. They are gigantic. Um, I, don't, I don't hate these roses, they're just really big, right? just want to put these in there and they're grabbing on to all of that mesh that we just put in there and it's kind of messy and let's throw, let's throw one of these things in there these are kind of cool I I like that they are glittered let's shove that in there I like that you know to make it tall and I definitely like these creepy sticks these creepy sticks are fun. I'm gonna stick one of those in there. I just keep, I 
I'm going to fit these two together because I feel like I need both of these. I'm going to just throw some glue on both of them. And you can always go back and glue higher up, but for now I'm just going to um, fit them in like that. Okay, I'm liking that. If they don't stand upright, of course, that's when I'll add a little more glue to the back of them, a little higher up on the cone area. For the moment, we're going to try this. Let's see how they do. And then I want to put in a couple of leaves, just, just kind of for decorative touch here. It's a lot of black, a lot of black. <laughs> So, so I'm not hating it, just uh, we will definitely need to add some more color when I get it. And I'm just, I'm put it, putting some leaves in and I can always go back. And I, I have those little red um, glitter balls, like the, the bowl filler or whatever they're called. Those would look cute, kind of scattered in here too, if I have the right color red. So I am going to add just a little more glue behind these. I'm going to kind of glob some glue in here because all these tall things are kind of wanting to fall over and I don't want that. So if I can glue it to the back leaf of one of these roses, kind of holding the back leaf of the rose to it, it's going to help hold it up. Now the front leaves will fall down, but that back leaf where I just put all that glue is going to be stuck in there. All right, I can I can see this. I like it. I like it. I, I, I want more. I want more color, but I like it. Um, I'm not unhappy with it at the slightest. And then we're just gonna add a couple of spiders because why not? Because we can. Because I have them sitting here. <laughs> okay, I have a spider, and I want to put this one right in the front there, right on top of that sawgrass. I may even add more spiders. I kind of like, I kind of think I want a spider on the boot too. I'm going to put a spider over here just because why not? I'm going to put a little glue under here. It's Halloween. We can be as spooky as we want to be. I'm going to put another spider. I think I might even put a spider down on the bodice or something, something down there. These are the little, these are the Walmart spiders. They have them every single year in their Halloween stuff. I always buy dozens. <laughs> so it's just part of, when I see them, I grab a bunch. All right, now, oof, let's grab our bodice and knock everything down in the process. Okay, so let's see. Off a spider and just see what it looks like here. I was actually considering putting a little spider right there. Honestly, I like it. I'm I can go back and find some red um, paint or glitter or something. Maybe a little bit of that gold. I put a spider right there. Maybe that maybe that is what I needed beside instead of a big flower. I don't know. I don't know. We're just we're just winging it here, guys. There we go. So I'm going to call it quits on that. Um, you saw how my mind works. You saw the process I took to get everything the way it is and, you know, the decisions that I made. And I hope by watching me make decisions, change my mind, do something else. <laughs> I hope it helps because, you know, look at this hat. I'm trying to the hat. You still have the red Harlequin that comes out. This is a lot of black. You see the little spiders poking out. You still have the, the trim around it, so it'll stand out. It's a lot of black. We're going to get some red in there, but for right now, I don't hate it. Okay, it's okay. Um, we use the mesh, the leftover mesh from our skirt. Um, the skirt, just bunch it up, tie it together in the middle. Very easy. Um, the Harlequin, I did not put the crosses on there. I didn't think, I didn't want to cover the Harlequin because that's, you know, the main part. Now, when I'm looking at the gold on here, guys, um, I'm, it's a bit much. Um, I'm, I'm very tempted to cover like we did um, with either the black or, I don't know if I wanna put more of that red on because that's a lot of that red, but I might, 
it's a lot it's a lot of gold it's this this is standing out more so than everything else and I don't want I don't want the emphasis to be on the boot area maybe the toe but not that so I might go back with this and just cut out a, the what this will do is cut out a little bit of that gold to make the gold not quite so much like this is a lot this just cuts it down a little so we're gonna do that so um when you're done with your project, you're never done with your project, right? You've got to look at it. You've got to step back. And I really love the chances or the, I really love the things we did with this one. We went way out of the box on things. Now you guys can see that spider in there and I, I'm kind of liking it. I'm kind of liking it better than a flower. So you can kind of see how the process and hopefully this helps you. I know this is an incredibly long video, but I hope um, all the different things that we talked about, all the different things that we did help you and you trying to decide um, what to put onto your witches because really it's a very personal thing, very personal choices. And I uh, hope you have fun with it. All right, guys, you have a fantastic evening. I will talk to you later.